Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blockchain Central. Today we'll look into the main differences between initial public offerings and initial coin offerings. An IPO or initial public offering is a process in which a company sells shares to investors on a stock exchange. With each share, the investor owns a part of the company. This process is also called going public because it makes it possible for almost anyone to invest in that company. An ICO, initial coin offering, is when a company sells early access to their own new currency. In a way, you could say that an ICO is like a Kickstarter campaign for blockchain projects. Over the course of this video, we'll take a closer look at the main differences between the two. Let's start with IPOs, the traditional approach to raising money. In fact, the first IPO was held by the Dutch East India Company, listed on the Amsterdam Stock Exchange in 1602. At the core of every IPO is the idea to give potential investors the opportunity to invest in a company and own stocks. Owning a stock typically comes with additional benefits, such as voting rights or dividend, a share of company profits. ICOs, on the other hand, have only been around for a few years. The very first ICO was held by MasterCoin in July 2013 and raised 5,000 Bitcoin. A year later, Ethereum raised money in the same way. In an ICO, a company that developed a coin offers to sell some of the coins at a discounted early bird price. So people who believe in the project can invest in it early and profit over time. Once increased demand drives up the price. The money collected from ICOs is then typically used to fund project development. Often, the company that does the ICO doesn't even need to build their own blockchain. They can use ERC20 tokens that run on the Ethereum blockchain. As mentioned earlier, an ICO works almost like a Kickstarter campaign for coins, especially when it comes to regulation. ICOs are not as heavily regulated as IPOs, which are governed by financial institutions like the FCC and the SEC in the USA. One significant way in which regulations matter is that companies that are preparing for an IPO have to disclose audited financials. The idea is to allow potential investors to analyze the company more accurately. ICOs are relatively regulated, which means that there are no rigorous due diligence done by any third party. As a result, ICOs are riskier and even turn out to be fraudulent. The second main difference between IPOs and ICOs is ownership. Investors who buy shares through an IPO own a proportionate size of the company and have corresponding voting rights. ICOs simply sell their product. Participating in an ICO will give investors ownership of their coins, but no stake in the company. As coins can rise in value, there is still an upholding promise for profits but there's typically no direct relationship to the company as it is the case with IPOs. Apart from these few theoretical distinctions, we also have a few more practical differences. ICOs, for example, are much cheaper and as such a better fit for young startups. An IPO comes with a responsibility that is a better fit for mature companies. A lack of regulation for ICOs means an ICO can be quickly executed and can be done more creatively. One creative way, for example, is an airdrop. A company that does an ICO sends a small amount of coins to all owners hoping for more widespread use of their product. So, as a final note, ICOs and IPOs are the two options to achieve the same goal, raising money. However, one is a very early stage way of raising funds while the other is usually the last. So it is possible for a company to have a successful ICO and then do an IPO a decade later, after growing bigger and reaching financial maturity. Okay, so what can we take away from this video? An IPO marks the first point in time when shares of a company are publicly offered, while an ICO marks the first point when new coins are offered. Because coins are just a product, they may yield profit, but they do not provide owners with voting powers or dividends. Overall, ICOs are more risky investment opportunities that reward the higher risk with higher potential earnings. That's it for this episode of Blockchain Central. Before you go, please note that this video does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities 
coins or tokens. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Happy investing.